Hey hey folks, I'm Rob and we're back with another Player 2 Plays. Now after, we call this obsession with Atari 50 after reviewing it a few weeks ago, I'll have a link to the review in the description by the way, I thought I'd do something a little different and actually walk through some of the games in the collection. Because there's like over a hundred here, um, covering stuff from some, you know, these reimagined games to arcade and the vintage, other vintage systems like the 2600, 5200, 7800 and so on, I thought it'd be cool to at least run through a bunch of the games. Not all of them because that would take forever, but just a few selections on each system. And that's what this is going to be, just a little multi-part thing where I pick. Each episode will focus on one of the, the different platforms. Moving forward chronologically, I think that'll be interesting. And we'll pick a few games and I'll show them off in action. So we're going to do arcade games first. And the first one of these I'm going to pick is Aka R. As it says there, it's an unreleased prototype game. Um, it went through for a location test and it didn't quite get picked up. And so it's the first time it's actually been made available to a wider audience. There are prototype cabinets that have been trotted out at shows in the US, but we're not in the US, so it's not convenient to play them. But now we can, thanks to Atari 50, so let's dive in. Now this one is a very weird, weird little shooter. Um, I've actually gone to appreciate it a bit more. Um, and so the idea is you have, you have two phases. You have a, each level has basically, I guess, two phases. In this first phase, you need to stop the enemies incoming. And the idea is you position the crosshair and a section of the screen that's lit up is where your shots will go. And your idea here is to fire shots in such a way that the enemies get taken out. And you want to prevent them from coming into the center of the screen, which is where you are here. Should that happen, we do want me now, me now and zoom in. And so that, and that changes how you control your shots. Um, one of the things is this is one of those games that was designed to be played with a trackball, you know, an inverted mouse. And it does suffer a bit on the collection because of it, you know, playing with a Switch Pro Controller like I am here. But the execution is actually really frantic. If stuff gets a little chaotic, you do have a, a, a smart bomb, the power blaster, but you only get one of those per level, so you've got to be, you know, you've got to be... Cool, we took that guy out, and we're on to level three. And so there's this really simple idea, and it's, it's sort of what makes this era of arcade games really interesting, of like the, you know, simple to learn, hard to master. Yeah, you've got a fairly simple concept. Defend your base. Oh, these guys always do me in. Uh, like I said, they always do me in. First life lost. Oh no. Oh no. First life lost. Sound of extra life, thankfully, so. Nice. So, way forward, you could sort of see it does the classic arcade game thing of just keep a simple mechanic, bring in different kinds of enemies, and ramp the intensity up. You know, a good arcade game is designed to be played for like two or three minutes at a time. Um, that's sort of the optimal. That's the optimal time frame that, you know, to keep people moving on the machines to make money. So, oof, my shield is not doing great there. Ooh, another life lost. Ugh. And so you can sort of see it's starting to get a little tricky now. But I imagine it'd probably be a little less so if you're playing on, on the original, on the original cab with the trackball. I mean, I wish they, I wish this collection did have support for it, but I think it does on PC, so lucked out a bit by playing on Switch, unfortunately. Nice. Two lives down, two lives left. I think our next extra life is at 30k, so I've still got a little room. 
then I get different enemies here. There we go, another eye. It's always good when games are predictable on their extra lives. Nice. When I really started messing around with this, I felt like, like, is it like miss, is it, I thought it was like, like Missile Command where you had to be pretty precise, but no, the fact that it's only just this region really helps keep this game flowing. We'll admit though, I wish I, I wish I could play it with a trackball. It just would feel so much more fun, I think. And that's sort of the downside of collections like this. You, you do make some compromises to be playable on a yeah, normal set of controls. And they've done... Done it. And they've done a good job of making it work. But yeah, you just really missed the trackball here. Anyway, this is like my last life now, so... Probably not going to get to 45k for our next life. But. Oh, oh no. Oh wow. That's Aka R, which is a very cool, very cool artifact that, you know, was lost to time, but he's no longer. So. I don't know why I'm doing this. The high score saves you have to manually take snapshots. Which is a bit of a downside. Anyway. So that's Aka R. And let's go back to the menu and pick another game to try. And I think what we'll do next. So if you remember a few months back, I took a look at Gravatar Recharge. The latest, well, what was the latest of Atari's recharged revamps of their classic games. And I reckon we'll take a look at, we'll have a quick play at Gravatar. It's a pretty tough game. So I think the game will be over pretty quick, but... Why not? And also, I really want, I really just love the vector, oops, I really love the vector emulation that they have here. So you're this little blue fighter, and the idea is you have to destroy all these worlds to move on to the next solar system. So we're going to just go off the easiest one now, as we come and descend. Our goal is to take those red turrets out. Scoop up the fuel and move on to it and move on. Alright, mission complete. But darn it. There's something about color vector graphics that's just beautiful. Um, let's get out of here. And the way they're presented here in Atari 50 with the, with the wobbling, I don't know how well it comes out in the recording. But the wobbling of just of the vectors, such a cool little detail. All right, so onto our next planet. Careful use of thrust and clumsily not using the shields. Um, the shields, are of course, activated by the same button that your tractor beam is, which. <laughs> That's woefully terrible. I'm usually a bit better at this. Not great, but better. So. Uh, press your pressure. Okay. Alright. Let's go for another run. See if we can at least clear the second planet. Now, this, I believe, is like asteroids in that on the original arcade machine. It was, um, you basically had buttons for everything. Button to rotate left or right, button for your thrust, and then a button for, um, a button for your, uh, the attractive beam.
It's definitely a hard game, and it's one of the things that I think I really appreciated with uh, with Gravatar Recharge was that they really sort of toned it down to make it a bit more chill, and it works so much to its advantage. Um, you can see this is not this is it's a tricky game because it doesn't it doesn't give you much room for error. All right, let's go down. Let's get that fuel. And we're all trying to do this whilst we've got a bunch of bonus time to get. Some more fuel there, and another part will be toast. As will I! Looks like there's only the one turret, the one turret left now, so that's advantageous. So let's get out of here and get some bonus points. All right. Go slingshot around the sun. Oh, this stage, this stage, this stage always does me. So I don't think we'll have another run after this. And that's game over. <laughs> All right, name goes in. Okay, so that's Gravatar. That's a great game, but it's ridiculously hard and... Uh, yeah, I mean, right there. Developers Mike Halley and Rich Adams say their game is the game is so hard they have never completed their own game without cheating. And as famously um, was talked about, basically they bought the difficulty up based on feedback from marketing and the location test. And they probably the marketing people gave them bad information. But enough of Gravatar. Onto the third game we're going to check out, and it's iRobot. This was actually the last arcade game Atari released before being split up a result of the, the American video game crash. And it's really cool from a technology angle, but also it's a fun, it's a fun weird shooter. Um, as it says there, it was the first game to use shaded 3D polygons. And so, by the standards of 1984, you've got to really appreciate that. Um, go back to original view. And so you've got Doodle City, which I don't think we'll play about with, but it's basically a a system that has all the um, all the objects in game. Now, so the idea of iRobot is you need to paint all the, the the screen red, all the red strips blue. And once you've done that, then you can make your way into the Guardian. And you wait for that Guardian. You got to be careful with the eye. If the eye is like the the, the iris around the pupil is red, then you can't jump because I'll blast you. Otherwise, you're free to jump. And we've done that first stage, so now we've got bonus stage moving on to the second. And right, so we've done stage one. Cool. So the eye is opening, we've got to be careful now. Blink's red, now we're safe. Eyes opening, we gotta avoid. And I really love what it does there of just like this sort of It gives you the sentinel big brother paranoia thing. Stage two done. Nice. I'm glad I've had a few runs to get used to this. Um, I'm doing a lot better than I did previously. Okay. 
Oh, what happened? Oh. Nice. Oops. Ooh. Okay, game over. Let's go. Go have another run. But Ivor was just really cool for being quite a bit different visually than what we got at the time. You know, most, the most advanced visuals, if anything, were 3D wireframe vectors. And so having solid 3D, you know, something we're used to in this day and age. Um, one thing that's really cool is the teleporter, so let's use it. But having solid 3D is actually quite special. And though ultimately iRobot was not much of a success, um, I think it was just a case of really expensive hardware and being in the midst of the, the North American crash. Darn it. Well, I think we'll... <laughs> All right, um... That was not a terrible, that was a terrible second run. So, we're going to do one more game for this episode, and it's, where is it? It's Quantum. Quantum's really different from what you expect from an arcade game, which is kind of why I like seeing it in this collection. Um, it's another one that I really wish I'd been able to actually play on an original cabinet, because the idea is you, you control that spark, and the idea is you've just got to track these items. And so you circle them with the tree. And it works okay with the thumbstick, but really it was designed to be played with a trackball controller. And I think you lose something a little bit in translation again. That's sort of one of these things about all these arcade games. Many of them really um, sort of lose some. A lot of them do lose something compared to some of the other console games we'll see. Anyway, let's try and trap three there. So all you do is you're just moving the thumbstick and you're just drawing the trail behind you. So, you know, it's sort of different, but similar to games like Kicks. Um, all right, level six. Right. Oh. All right. Unfortunately, the the emulation uh, seems to accidentally treat when you're selecting the the menu to launch it. It's a bit of bit of an irritant, but hopefully this time we should be okay. But you sort of get the idea. It's it's a very nice it's very nice and sedate. It's very weird that I would say that, but it just feels kind of sedate in how you um just circle these objects you're not you're not under encroaching pressure like many other arcade games offer it's it's such a different experience that it's kind of cool and again it's a game that i'm really glad is on this collection because it's different enough from what you know what else you get so and that's i mean that's something that i'm always going to sort of champion is we're going to always see collections which do some which offer games which do something a little different Nice, we're getting some progress here. He's got to be careful not to circle too big. And we've got these suckers splitting up, that's fine. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> okay, there we go. Alright. 
this one's a moment where, um, where <laughs> this one gets challenging. Anyway, so we're going to try it. And this is sort of where it's a little limiting. Yeah, because if you get the top score, your overall top score, you, um, you do actually get to sign your name in. And I imagine if you're playing on, on the original cabinet with the trackball, it would feel great. But unfortunately, you know, playing with a gamepad's not quite the same. Again, I feel this would be great if you're playing um, with Atari 50 on the PC where you've got mouse support. So that would be really advantageous. Unfortunately, unlike the previous collection, um, the PC version is only on PC, which is a bit of a bummer. Um, Atari Vault was on Mac as well, and I had a lot of blast, a lot of good times with it. But oh well, things things change. Anyway, stage level oh level five. Look how much this just goes in a blur sometimes. Anyway. Nice. One more actual thing to go to get yeah, one more thing to go to complete the stage and then I run right into it. At least it doesn't reset the stage to the start when that happens. Uh, I really appreciate that. Alright. Stage seven. Oh, this, this one on stage 8 was always a pain. But I think... Oh, we're getting there. That's... Troublemaking sucker. I don't know why. Like, sometimes you want to try and go for the combos to get the points, but sometimes you can't. Um, can we actually circle my name properly here? Yes. Anyway, I'm gonna. I think we'll call this. We'll call this a wrap. Um, Quantum is quite a cool game, and definitely one you you might want to check out. Should you should you pick up Atari Fifty, which I hope you do, if the review hasn't already convinced you. As I said, the plan is for a few more episodes after this, covering the other platforms in the collection. So I hope you stick with the channel and check those out as well. As always, you know we've got plenty of stuff on the main Player Two website. Um, and yeah, long podcast. You could subscribe to the channel here to get some of the other P2 plays by other folks on the team. And of course, support the show, the channel and the crew over on Patreon. Um, with that, I'm going to leave this here. So thank you all very much for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.